trying to well and you haven't been freaking down about all the viruses floating around like I was last week, uh, which is one of the reasons I probably look very tired today. So um, I'm starting today this second, sorry, third video of my series on how to steam ingredients with a steam cooker. Uh, I want to start with the most obvious um, one. Uh, I did eggs, I did rice, now I'm doing vegetables, um, the normal kind. I haven't done green leafy vegetables yet and I haven't done root vegetables yet but that's going to follow and later I will do also fish and meat and other grains and so on. So let's start with vegetables. Uh, I wanted to show you what vegetables you can cook. Obviously all of them in there except those you would rather eat raw of course because raw vegetables are usually more nutritious, they have more fibers, they have more vitamins. Not cooking means that your vegetable keep all the nutrition density that they can provided of course that you can't digest them. So most vegetables that we eat uh, steamed are going to be the cabbage family, squash family, um, like spring squash. Um, I also have celery, which I usually eat raw, but I also cook sometimes. Leek, onions, mushrooms. Um, so I'm going to show you all this so you get an idea of what kind of vegetables cook so long, how small or big to cook to cut them, and how to put them in there, if you can mix them, how much do you want to put in a steam cooker so it actually steams efficiently and doesn't take forever to cook. Um, so I'm going to show you all this so you get an idea of what kind of vegetables cook so long, how small or big to cook to cut them, and how to put them in there, if you can mix them, how much do you want to put in a steam cooker so it actually steams efficiently and doesn't take forever to cook. Um, so we're going to start with showing you everything that I have on my uh, counter and then turn on the, the steam cooker, cook it and show you how it looks like and how to know how it, whether or not it's cooked enough. So first things first, we're turning on the steam cooker so uh, it's, it's up while we're actually cutting the vegetables. So here it is, I'm going to show you, just, I just filled it with about an inch of water. It, I filled it with water that I preheated in my thermos in the morning when I make chocolate or when I make um, some coffee or tea. I heat the whole kettle, then I put it in there so I have, don't have to reheat everything uh, several times. That again takes some time. Then, so I have to make an explanation here. I put one inch, but you can put one to two inches of water in there. So let's add a little more from my kettle. After, once you've filled up the steam cooker with enough water, then you see the steam starts building up. Once the water is truly boiling, the water is actually going to boil a little up and um, some of the water is going to go everywhere in there and might actually reach your vegetables in the steam basket if there's not enough room in between there and up to actually make sure that the water doesn't touch the vegetables. It had happened to me sometimes that when I went making uh, some fish, for some reason the fish was sweating out some salt and, or, and the water kept going up and touched the fish. So you have to make sure there is enough water but also not too much so the, the water doesn't go up and touch the vegetables and that's why you have such a big tank in that you don't really need to fill it up completely right so once you have that up there you keep you let it heat up you have your steam basket or sieve whatever you want to call it with holes that are about five millimeters uh, so it's half a centimeter so I, I guess probably a quarter of an inch approximately and it has enough the holes are big enough to get the water, the, the steam, to circulate in there without pressure. When you close the rounded top, the rounded top is actually not pressurized. It will let the just it will just go up like that when it has enough of steam, and the steam gonna get out when there's too much steam in there. 
Uh, the last thing that's important to know is that the rounded top is made so that when the steam, the condensate, the water, the steam condensates, then the water that has condensated will go on the side of the rounded top back down instead of falling straight down onto your food as it would if it was a flat lid. So the rounded top also is important. That's all the, the, the whole thing was decided with making sure that your food is um, keeps its nutrient density and can actually sweat out toxins without having toxin fall back onto it. So that's why also you have only one level uh, and not two, otherwise the steam from the upper level would fall onto the food on the lower level, which would contaminate the lower level food. I've um, wrote, written a little more about that topic on my blog post on how to steam eggs, if you want to know. So now we're going to uh, cut all the vegetables. So here are all the vegetables we're going to cook. We have a few cabbages here. Uh, so broccoli, cauliflower, and red cabbage. Green cabbage will cook the same amount of time in the same way. Uh, we have zucchini. Uh, we have <laughs> mushrooms, um, Brussels sprouts, leek, and onion or shallots. I'm going to just make the onion, the shallots. It's usually cut a lot about the same size and cuts the same amount of time. So I'm going to cut them. Uh, one principle you have to know is if you want to keep, if you want to make sure oxidation is built in your vegetables when you cut them, you have to make sure you cut them from in the direction of root to the top and the oxidation will not be as um, strong and so your vegetable will remain more green instead of building some brown after you have cut them. So I'm going to cut them in front of you and you'll see what kind of what size I usually cut them so it cooks approximately um, three for mushroom and leak to five minutes for all the others. So we cooked all the vegetables. I've isolated the vegetables depending on time. Um, so those vegetables here cooked for five minutes. Those vegetables here cooked for four minutes. You have pepper, Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower, broccoli, onion here, and you have uh, mushrooms, um, cabbage, zucchini and leek and um, asparagus and celery. There you go. So um, I wanted to show you how the colored, the colors are still very vibrant. Uh, cabbage tend to lose a bit of its color, so it colors a little bit its neighbors. So the white part of the red cabbage has been gone a little more purple but it's still very nice and crunchy. If you put your knife in there, it still is pretty much very crunchy here. Ah, there you go. So the goal is to make sure that your vegetables are not completely flabby and that the fiber hasn't been broken completely through the process. So your Asparagus is still pretty straight when you have cooked it. You put your knife in it and it's still gonna come. Maybe not. Um, anyway, the fiber is not broken and you're still gonna be able to crunch it with your um, teeth, okay? And chew it. You don't get vegetables that are mushy because if they're mushy, their fibers have been broken, which means the glycemic index on your food has gone up. The fiber actually lowers the glycemic index. The more fiber, the more glycemic index is going to be low. Here is zucchini, same thing. If you cook it a little more than four minutes, uh, especially when it's smaller, you're going to be having mushy zucchini, and usually mushy zucchini tastes a little more bitter. 
so I wouldn't actually make sure I would make sure that I don't cook it too long so you have to be able to take it and keep it so this one has been cooked a touch too much uh, leek is the same thing you want the leek to keep its bright color so that's the green part of it you have the dark green part of it which I also eat the darker the more taste you're gonna have the more intense the taste is which is one of the reasons a lot of people actually don't eat all the green from leek because they find that the taste is too strong I don't know I really like it uh, grew up in it I would eat everything in the leek if I could now you have five minutes cooked vegetables I'm gonna slide a little bit here you go um, that's the Brussels sprout cut in four you don't need much smaller than that five minutes it's still crunchy it doesn't smell it's really not gonna have if you don't like the smell of cabbage you would be really happy with steam cooking because it doesn't smell the sulfur sulfur smell you usually have is not there um, same for cauliflower it just has a very light scent of cauliflower natural scent not a strong scent that makes you want to not eat it um, broccoli same thing you can still do that you just put your knife a little bit like this and if it goes through uh, without going in through like butter it is cooked enough um, same for the pepper you just need to be able to put your knife through it's still gonna be holding itself that means it has enough fiber it's not broken down and if you see the color of the non-cooked pepper versus the cooked pepper the color is a touch faded but it's still the same there it's still very strong so you haven't actually the color the intensity of the color of your vegetable means that your a good part of your vitamins are still there uh, has not been destroyed now you have uh, onions here that I cook five minutes sometimes I cook them less than that if they want them a little crunchier and I want to finish them in the pan but same thing there still have some fiber in and they're a little bit transparent so they're not as um, as uh, stingy as they would be otherwise so here is uh, typical vegetables that you'll have the one that cook for five minutes the one that cook for four minutes if you go a little thinner like kale and um, spinach and uh, those kind of vegetables that are very dark leafy color greens and so on you will want to just cook them like for one to two minutes just to break down a little bit of the fiber so it doesn't uh, kill all of it right you want to still have all your nutrients all your fibers alive and the taste mostly and the smell that are preserved and if you go to root vegetable you're gonna go beyond five to six minutes also depending on how big you're gonna cut them but that's about the principle so most vegetables are gonna be between four and three and five minutes the rest it will depend on the thickness of the cut and on the thickness of the meat of the vegetables here we are so now you know how to steam the most basic vegetable you would find in a store uh, you have to remember that if you go to a farmer's market and you get very fresh vegetables their fibers are going to be much stronger and much and also softer so the cooking process is going to take less time if your vegetable is older and tougher it's going to take sometimes way more time to cook it so you know approximately where your vegetable comes from where they've been bought and you know from the look of it if they have less colors um, if they're a little older so you're gonna have to be a little more patient and, and add one or two minutes depending uh, make sure though that you make that you pay attention to the color and texture of the vegetable so you don't break down all the vegetables all the vitamins sorry and all the <laughs> fibers and hormones plant hormones that those contain because this is important for your health and for everything that your body is going to take from the food you eat uh, it's great to have supplements but honestly if you have to spend all this money to stay healthy and eat good food if you want to have 
as much as possible left in your food uh, after you cook it. Uh, one last thing, um, if you don't overcook your food, it's going to taste, it's going to have some taste, so you're not going to need to dress it with as much, uh, as much sauce that you buy at the store or dressing or strong, strong dressing that would mask all the taste. You can just go very simple with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and some herbs and salt and pepper, and you will see how much taste the vegetables have. And so you will not have to pay for all those dressings. Of course, you're gonna wanna have some good dressings and make sure that the vegetables that you eat are paired right, but really, try them with very very simple dressings like if i have mushrooms i will do a little bit of olive oil salt and a little bit of garlic that's just fine you don't need anything more most of my other vegetables i use rosemary thyme um, salt and uh, herb de provence which is where i come from so that's my heavy influence it doesn't really require much you won't need to plan your meal uh, a long time in advance you just can't make it on the fly and it will be just fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will keep following me and learn more about steam cooking, that maybe you will want to take the adventure like me and do it with your family so you can keep healthier, that your meal can be done by you instead of outsourcing it to somebody else that might not use the same quality ingredients. Um, you can register to this video series uh, by subscribing down there. You can also visit my blog, steamcuisinelifestyle.com and see the recipes that I make with the steam cooker uh, and all those vegetables that you see on my planks of wood here. Uh, I will see you for the next video soon and for my newsletter, if you subscribe to my newsletter, uh, in the link below as well. Bye, have a great day.